Christ. What's the idea of the pictures, mister? Life magazine's doing a story on the theater. Why didn't you tell me? Look at my hair. What's so special about this place? It's news, soldier. This theater went through the Blitz and never missed a single performance. No kidding. Aye, and uh, one of your lessons is in on it, too. Hmm. Rasavica. She's an American. Wonderful thing, Len Lees. There isn't one of them girls that couldn't be on the cover of your magazine. Oh, cut yourself, my feet. All of them? Girls, we've made history. Now we're making life. Wait till you see it. A six-page spread glorifying the music box girls. Come on, girls, we're on. Now, Miss Bruce, just want to use something informal. Surely. This ought to help the circulation. This will do more for the blood pressure. <laughs> just one more. Uh, sorry, I'm on again. Getting all the pictures you want? There's one I'd like to get right now, the boss. How about it, Miss Tolliver? Oh, well, the only pictures I have taken now are x-rays. Fine, we'll use them, too. Anything about the woman who kept this theater going through the Blitz is human interest, though. I'd like to get some from up high with my view camera. Sam, show him around. I'll take over. Come along, young man. You were here during the Blitz, weren't you, Sam? That I was. How was it? Well, you've got to take things as you find them. How did you find them? We didn't have to, my boy. They found us. Hey. Bombs, eh? Yeah. Incendiaries. Even that didn't stop the show? That it didn't. Actors are used to having things thrown at them. I'd like to have had my camera here when things were popping. Well, you got some rare pictures. And a story to go with it, I'll bet. Yes, and a story to go with it. Any special story, Sam? A very special story. A story that'd make you laugh if it didn't make you cry. Would you like to hear it? That's what I'm here for. Well, I'll have to go back before the Blitz. Back before the war. There was peace on Earth and bad will among men, as you might say. But we knew the war wasn't far off. It was in rehearsal, so to speak, like our new show. Come on, Ross, Judy, Angela, Tony, that's your cue. All right, we'll take it from the second floor. Darling, how nice of you to drop in. And what a lovely hat. And now that we've all seen it, you can take it off. Well, you see, it was this way, Tolly. I... When I call rehearsal at 10, I don't mean 10.30. What's that? It's me, Mrs. Tolliver. I just got it back from the pawnbrokers. I was practicing. I hired you as an electrician, didn't I? But, Mrs. Tolliver, you can get all the electricians you want, but there's only one xylophone player like me. Well, that's encouraging. That's right. Now, put that thing away and get back on your job. Very well, ma'am. All right, girls, we'll try it now. And I want no further interruptions. There, I'll give her right. What do you want? Mrs. Tolliver? Yes? I have a letter from Mr. Holliday. Oh. Is Jim Holliday a friend of yours? Well, I, I know Mr. Holliday. Obviously. What's more important is he's seen you dance. Oh, yes, yes. Several times. Where did you work? The Globe. What sort of thing did you do there? I worked at a loom. But you just said you danced at the Globe Theater. No, I said I worked at the Globe. That's Mr. Halliday's firm, the Globe Cotton Mills. But you're dancing. Where did you dance? The Globe. How can you dance at the Globe? The Globe's not a theater, it's a cotton mill. Well, you see, when you dance, you must have a rhythm. Naturally. And I worked at a loom, and there's a rhythm to the way it works. And what, may I ask, is your thought? My what? I mean, what sort of dancing do you do? Oh, I see. Well, uh, none, really. What? I dance pretty much as I feel. If I feel good, I, I dance... I don't feel so good. And how do you feel now? Hungry. 
I came up with the milk train and I've had no breakfast. I think we should see this Nijinsky from Manchester. The name is Lawson, uh, Tommy Lawson. Give your music to the pianist, Mr. Lawson. Oh, I have no music. Then tell him what you want him to play. Well, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry we haven't a loom, Mr. Lawson. <laughs> when you're not at the mill, what do you dance to? Oh, Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, Gilbert and Sullivan. Whatever's coming in over the radio. Now I've heard everything. Sam, bring me your wireless. Move back, girls, and give him room. Young man, the stage is yours. Thank you. to him. young man. That uh, trick thing you did on the stairs, will you do it again, please? I don't think I can. What do you mean? Well, I don't remember the steps. I just make them up as I go along. <laughs> you have talent, young man, but it's a Sunday driver sort of talent. I wouldn't know how to use it. Half an hour, everybody, and be back on time. Tolly, you're crazy if you let that boy go. He's wonderful. Give him a chance, Tolly. Think of what he can do for the show. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey, Manchester, wait a minute. Don't let Tolly get you down. Look, I've been a dancer all my life, and I know dancing when I see it. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Hold on a minute. I liked it, too. I meant you, too. But you've got to set a routine and do it exactly the same way every time. And you must remember it. Oh, it's no good. I'm going back to my loom. But look, if you go back home now, you're licked. You've got something to sell. Sell it. You're very kind, both of you, but... But this business of dancing the same way all the time, I But can't... you can do it. We're going to teach you everything you know. Go ahead, Judy. Now watch me. Got it? Got it. Go ahead, try it. All right. Well, 
I've seen better and I've seen worse. Oh, that's a bit of all right. How do you know? How do I know? I've worked in the theatre 15 years. What do you know? What do I know? Haven't I worked for some of the biggest managers in this business? Go on, you clean their theatres, that's what. Well, they never did nothing without asking me what about it. Oh, come off it. Mrs. Peabody, they'd say. In or out. And it was usually out. Well, what do you think now, Mrs. Peabody? Oh, Lord, Mum, you did give me a nasty turn. Well, what do you think? In. You know there's a war on? Sorry, Mr. Warden. It was my fault. I just wanted to see our names and lights be before. Pilot to navigator, pilot to navigator. Where the devil are we? Can't get my bearings in this bottle of ink. Wow. Gentlemen, we seem to have located an objective. Our uh, target for tonight, sir? We can try, gentlemen. We can try. Changing course, sir. Start my heart a bubbling like champagne. You excite me, and there is nothing I can do. When you appear, I hear a cheer like thunder in the blue. When you weave the spell, you weave. I fear to stay. Die is cast, it's too fantastic yet. It's true. Am I right? Am I exciting you?
Bert, cut your finale short. Here they come again. Well, can I help it if they're early? Ladies and gentlemen, there's a shelter under the stage. Just pass through the doors at each side of the theater. Thank you. This way, gentlemen. Come on, boys. You've been invited to stay. And how do you do, Mrs. Good? Straight ahead, Mr. Right turn down there, right on down to the basement, folks. No, sir. This way, sir. Right on down, sir. That's the way. Right turn now, right on down to the basement. Move along now, folks. I wish I had my makeup off and was home in bed. Well, wishing won't get you there. Nor you either, chum. I haven't slept a wink for nights. Oh, neither have I. I'm exhausted. Last night, the man next to me snored for hours. I'll never sleep in the underground again. Alfred, don't make so much noise. Sorry, is that yours? You mean to say you've never heard of the great Waldo and his xylophone? Can't say I have. That's me, 20 years ago, and this is my xylophone. We were a great act. Evidently. A great act. Sorry. That's not very comforting. That's like having a lifeguard say he's afraid of the water. Oh, I don't mean this. I mean you. You, uh, you did a little bombing tonight yourself, you know? That dance you did. In fact, uh, you bombed from a very low altitude. It's not only unfair, it was practically illegal. Well, I'm sorry. And you should be. I hope I didn't hit anything vital. Knocked out my whole communicating system, if that's any concern to you. I think you should have supper with me and sort of help put me together again, don't you? No. You don't? No. Well, you haven't any conscience at all, have you? I have a perfectly beautiful conscience. But I also had a date. Yeah, naturally. But uh, you could switch it. I've only got tonight. <laughs> and tomorrow night. I'm sorry, but I... Have you ever been to the 299 Club? Never. You'll like it enormously. I have no doubt about it, They've got the hottest band can... in London, imported from America. You are an American, aren't you? St. Louis. Oh, wait till you hear that band play the St. Louis Blues. It'll sound like a letter from home. For a man whose communicating system is out of order, you're doing awfully well. Am I? What must you be like when it's working? You'll see. Tolly, that last one got the Cumberland Theater, a direct hit. That's the first hit they've had in 10 years. <laughs> All clear. Oh, well, Roz, I've got to make a telephone call to the sector chief. You and Judy go ahead to Philippe's, eh? Oh, by the way, good night. Well, you don't really mean that. I mean just that. I wish you a very good night. Something you are a very, very naughty child. Why? What did you do tell Annette? I would have fix you a great big celebration. Celebration? And you are just as bad as she is. 
Why keep away from me those secrets? What are you talking about, Annette? Many happy returns of the day. A little birthday party for you. Oh. Mmm. Very nice. Champagne. Flowers. How beautiful. And look, Judy, candy. Too. Oh, oh, it's really nothing. Too bad. It isn't my birthday. It isn't. What do you know about that, Madame Annette? It's not her birthday. No? Oh, I get it. You're the clever one, mon brave. <laughs> Such a pity. Oh, please stay. Well, uh, if you decide it is your birthday, Roz, um, I'll meet Tommy somewhere else. Oh, no, no. I'm expecting all of you. Oh. We might as well, Judy. If I don't admit it's my birthday, I shudder to think what holiday he might declare. <laughs> Intelligent girl. Oh, no, no. I know what I'm licked, that's all. Here we are. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. Ah. For you. Champagne. What are you trying to do, launch something? That's an idea. I christened the beautiful friendship. Very beautiful. He's very charming, your aviator. Thank you, Annette. Vive la France. A free French. Vive l'amour. <laughs> <laughs> I remember during the last war, there was an aviator, just such a one as you, monsieur. So watch out. <laughs> I've been hearing nothing from you for the past three days, except that you're a blitz grandmother. Loud clean out of bed, my daughter was, and her baby was born underneath it. The air aid warden said it must have been a special kind of a bomb. It'll a secret weapon, I suppose. Well, ain't everybody as can have a baby in an air raid. Well, it could happen to anyone. <laughs> I'd like to see it happen to me. Good night, Mr. Lawson. Good night. Good night. Come in. Mm -hmm. Let me take a look at you. What you can do to a dress. Thank you, Tommy. You know, I was just thinking, if I saw you somewhere and didn't know you, I'm awfully glad I know you, Roz. So am I, Tommy. If only someone from Manchester could be in Philippe's to see me walk in with you. Oh, I'm sorry, Tommy, but I can't have supper with you and Judy. I, I have a date. The Air Force again? Mm-hmm. Whose birthday is it tonight? Nobody's. No, of course not. What is it this time? Is Uncle Silver wedding or the... Chinese New Year. No, it's old home week. I'm going to meet a fellow from his outfit. His name's Chuck Brown. And he's from St. Louis, same as me. Oh, no, Roz. Sure he is. It's a small world, isn't it? I'm disappointed in him. I thought he'd pull a better one than that. Who? Lundy. Roz, that's the oldest dodge in the world. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. Perhaps there is a Chuck Brown. Of course there is, or Paul wouldn't say so. Well, where are you meeting? I don't know why. I bet it's his apartment. It's such a comfortable place to wait, in case Mr. Brown is delayed. I'll also bet you that sometime during the evening there'll be a convenient message from Mr. Thanks, Brown Tommy. saying. Thanks, Tommy. But I think I'm as good a judge of people as you are. Woman's intuition, eh? That's right. Woman's intuition is an old established custom, Tommy. Good night, Judy. Good night, Ross. You two been having a row? Oh, no, no. Just whistling her off to meet Prince Charming. Oh. Shows what a uniform can do. I like your eyes, even if the army doesn't. Come on, Tommy. I've got a date, too, you know. Thank you, sir. Right. Uh, uh mustn't smile. It lights up the street so much the warden will be running us in. We're going to have supper at my apartment. It's more comfortable there. Temple Gardens. Now you can smile. letter came for you, sir. A gentleman from the Royal Air Force left it. Thank you. This is where I lived before I joined up. It's very nice. Well, you've no idea how your being in it improves it. 
Make yourself at home. I'll find you something to drink. Aren't you going to read your note? Oh. Oh, may I? Of course. It might be something, well, unexpected. Oh, I, uh, I rather expected this. It's from a very forgetful man. I'll be right back. I suppose you'd like ice. really isn't a cocktail. It's a deadly love potion brewed from an ancient recipe. What's the matter? I just did something awful. <sighs> Impossible. I read your letter. It's awfully bad manners, and I never did anything like that in my life before, but I... I just had to, don't you see? Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't have read it if you wanted to. It was just from... I know, but... For goodness sakes, give me a drink. You know, at home I used to read books about England. The hero always lived in rooms like this. Fine old building with lots of tradition. Cheerful fire. Oak panel walls. Old worn leather armchairs. Solid and substantial. It's very reassuring. Oh. Yes? Of course. Send him up at once. Who's that? My father. He doesn't look as if he likes me very much. Well, if he looks a bit startled, you're probably the first actress he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> Anything more, sir? Well, that'll be all, thanks. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, miss. If we get hungry. He isn't coming, is he? Who? Chuck Brown. Oh, darling, you really wouldn't have liked him at all. Very rude fellow, not your type. Of course, I didn't find all these things out until... Rosalind, please, say you're glad he isn't coming. Doesn't matter. I discovered something very interesting tonight. Do you know that? What? That woman's intuition is highly overrated. I've discovered something, too. Really? Well, don't you want to hear what it is? It's something you yourself said last night. I? What? Listen. You excite me. Beyond my power to explain Yours is the art to start my heart A bubbling like champagne You ex I'm glad this is not an example of British strategy For I'd be very worried about the outcome of the war Is it early? I hadn't noticed. Didn't you have a nice time? Oh, sure. Grand. Well, tell me about it. Where'd you go? Oh, well, we ended up at Paul's apartment.
wasn't any man from St. Louis. He didn't show up. He wasn't meant to show up. It was just one of Paul's little ideas. It's just one of those things. I, I thought Paul was different, but... Oh, Judy, how I wanted him to be different. Not to be here. That is the question, old man. No, oh, boy. That's the answer. What's happened to my call with the Music Box Theater, London? I've been waiting more than. But she can't refuse the call, can she? These are for you, sir. They mark return to sender. Yes. What shall I, I do? Know. Well, uh, have you a mother? Oh, yes, sir. That's it. Thank you. You excite me beyond my power to explain. Yours is the art to start my heart a bubbling like champagne. It's sensational, sir. Music, dancing, girls, everything the men want. I don't know. We've got Shakespeare booked on Sunday. Oh, I'm not saying a word against Shakespeare, sir. He's very well thought of. But uh, a thing like this has its points, too, sir. I mean, in its own way, it's quite uh, educational. I'll put in a request for them. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, uh, could you mark it urgent, sir, in case any of the young ladies has other plans? What? Oh, yes. Yes, quite. I'm sorry. They really gave it to us tonight. The streets are full of bricks and glass. We can't even get home. This is the last straw. I can't remember when I've had a good night's sleep. Well, aren't the buses running? Nothing is running. Nothing's even walking. Well, look who's here. Mary, queen of the war effort. Where's the colonel? Waiting for me at the 299 club. I taxi couldn't get through. Why didn't he send a tank for you? I don't know what my ma'll say not going home. Well, you had to come back, too. Couldn't take the girls to supper, and we couldn't take them home. So we brought her back to you. It's no good, children. We can't go on like this. It's going to get worse instead of better. You're not going to close the music box, are you? What about us? Ain't we got our rights? It's easy for you chaps. You're only in for one show. We do five a day. Don't close up. There aren't many theaters left open. I'm on a minesweeper, and these shows are nice to come home to. You can't do it, Tolly. They're right. If they want to come, you've got to stay open. I don't know how we're going to do it, but if that's the way you want it, lads, we'll have a try at it. <laughs> All right, girls, say good night to your friends. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, wake me up for the first show, somebody. Poor dog, they're barking. He's telling me to pick mine. Well, it's better than trying to get home, that's all I can say. If we still got a home. Of course we've got a home. What's the matter with staying right here in the theater? Live in a theater? But what about my social life? No, thanks. I'm not running any home for actors. Oh, we won't be any trouble, Tolly. All we have to do is put mattresses in the dressing rooms. I and... can imagine you people together 24 hours a day. A thing like that breeds murder. Oh, we'd behave like lambs, Tolly. We could pool our Russian points and rig up a kitchen and canteen upstairs. Come on, Tolly, it'd be fun. Yes, oh, yes. Tolly. Come on, 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 Tolly
Yes. Very well, if all of you want to try it, I'll agree. You've made your beds, now you can sleep in them. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Feel you'd like to drop, but you must never stop. Just go on with the fight tonight and every night. La 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 da 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 da. When all is said and done, let's have some fun tonight and every night. Everybody up. Come along, girls. Eight o'clock. Up you get. Show a leg. Oh, have a heart, Sam. Why can't we even sleep on Sunday morning? Not this Sunday, you can't. You've got a date with the Air Force, all of you. Well, I've seen better landings. Sorry, sir. Not bad. We made it in 55 minutes. We're in luck, sir. The show's still on. Yes, I'm afraid my devotion to the uh, drama is as great as yours, sir. <laughs> I suppose you want me to take these reports to control, sir. No, no, never mind. The war's taken up quite enough of your time this evening, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Bugler blows lights out. We have some time to think about the many chaps that we have left behind us. There's one especially I recall. There's one I miss the most of all. We've placed them on the wall just to remind us. And I snapped my favorite pin up as he waved goodbye at the train. He started to cry. I yelled, chin up. One of us has to remain. I'm a lonely girl, I readily admit it. I was merely patriotic when I sighed. And I'm very frank to say I did it for the boy I left behind. Some men in uniform have tried to sway me. They all fail because he's always on my mind. And I'm saving most of what they pay me for the boy I left behind. Yes, he was first in line to enlist. Shouting V for victory. They looked, but found no pulse in his wrist. So maybe that's why they took me. If they need me, then I'm glad to be of service. But there's one thing that I wish they had defined. Oh, they should have told me I'd get nervous for the boy I left. I get aches all over, and it's getting chronic. I take medicine and pills of every kind, but they'll never substitute a tonic for the boy I left behind. The other day, I got the sweetest letter. All my love and kisses, that's the way he sighed. So each night I wear his favorite sweater for the boy I left behind. He goes down to the blood bank each day, shouting V for victory. He takes more blood than he gives away. So maybe that's why they took me. I'm so 
supposed to be content and just keep dreaming. If they think that I'm content, they must be blind. Cause I go to sleep and wake up screaming. trying, can you? After all, even a dog is entitled to one bite. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I, I don't mean that literally. I just mean that... I know exactly what you mean. We're grown up. We're modern. We know what it's all about. And remember, darling, there's a war on. Routine number three. That isn't a routine. It's true. There is a war on. And it gives us so little time. Don't let's waste it, Rosalind. Please don't let's waste it. Aren't you convinced yet that I'm I... convinced of this. That I've had a very bad time since you walked out on me. Too bad about you. I've tried to phone you. I've apologized a dozen times in letters. Which I never opened. Well, there you are. Is that fair? I've tried to tell you how I feel. I... Well, you've got to listen. I might not have another chance. Why not? If there is a tomorrow. It's so much velvet, Roz. Don't talk like that. Please like me. At least like me. This is Miss Bruce, sir. How do you do? How do you do? I'm sorry, Lundy, but there's something big on tonight. For you? Evidently. I'm sorry to have to interrupt this excellent show, but I have an announcement to make. All crews of squadrons 1082, 1083, and 1084 will assemble at once in the lecture room in this building. The rest of you, as you were. Please carry on the show. Thank you. Well, so long. Oh. Come back safely. Do you want me to? I want you to. Come on, Paul. OK. Oh, you'll let me know when you... I'll telephone you tomorrow. In the meantime, say it over to yourself a hundred times. Paul loves me. And when I get back, you'll be used to the idea. I'm used to it right now. I get John awful quick. from the music box, aren't you? Yes. 
You'll be late. Morning, ladies. Well, that's the first time I ever saw Mr. Tommy take a nip. It's the Blitz. Everything's topsy-turvy. Oh, man, stop drinking. Doctor calls it shell shock. Quaint Hi, Judy. Top of the morning. Hello, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy creates the most original new steps. I'm sorry to keep bothering you. Yes, I know you're not permitted to give out any information, but... Well, last night's squadron leader, Lundy, said... Well, he said he would telephone me, and I haven't heard from him. And all I want to know is, is, did he get back? Can't you tell me that, please? And all the time, I thought Tommy was going for you. Oh, shut up. I can't keep up with the love life of this opera house. Now, when I want a man, I go after him. Thanks for the trade secret. Judy, you're on. Coming, Sam. I'm betting on Paul Rods. Do you think I'm not? On with you, Judy. I see a friend of mine in the ARP. Hi there, pal. Is that you, Al? Yes, come on down and bring your gal. Just a few more, one or two more, and the roll's complete. Here stands all of England, the guy in the sky, the boy on the phone. like to ask you why we're gathered here. The reason you've been invited is to show the world that we're united. If you've a faith like mine, the stars are bound to shine. The skies will all be bright tonight and every night. Every night. So keep your spirits high. The clouds will all go by. We've got a cozy side tonight and every night. Every night. Say why so glum? Things could be much worse. And how about you, lad? Why so sad? How can 
we go forward when you're in reverse. If you agree with me, let's have some harmony. Do re mi fa so mi, so what if it's not right? Whatever song is played will help your worries fade and make your care take flight tonight and every night. We're gonna win, come on, grin. Sounds wonderful. Where are you? I'm here, in London. On my way back to my unit. I ran into a little trouble. Forced landed in Scotland. I'm going to see you, aren't I? You're not going back right away. There's an 8 o'clock train tomorrow morning. I've got to be on it. That'll give us 10 whole hours, darling. Sir, but we are going somewhere, aren't we? Oh, yes, yes. I, I'm sorry. We, uh... Where to? We've never been by ourselves in our whole life. Do you realize that? I realize it. Well, once. But uh, we don't talk about that, do we? No, we don't talk about that. Thanks. Besides, you've forgiven. How about me forgiving you too, Governor, and let's be off. Oh, uh, oh yes. Yes. Um, uh, well, there, there must be somewhere we can go. There's only one place we could be by ourselves, isn't there? Can't we go there? My place. Why not? I love you. It's all so beautiful, it fair makes me heart bleed. Can't we love and trust each other and still drive round the park a bit? <laughs> <laughs> no, Cabby, my place. <laughs> I don't want to be nosy, Governor, but it would be much easier if I had your address, now, wouldn't it? Oh, sorry. Temple Gardens. Thank you, sir. Would you like to take cover, sir? Oh, thanks. We'll go on. Sorry, sir. Would you mind giving up this cab? It's urgent. Certainly. Go right ahead. to my place. I don't suppose you can make it, though, in those high heels. I go everywhere in high heels. Come on, let's go. 
What a climate. The one night you beg for a fog, and look at that silly moon absolutely blazing away. Isn't that your flat? That was my flat. Have you ever been asleep with a girl you love on the embankment in the early morning? Quite frankly, I haven't. Opens up a whole new line of thought. I'm going to marry her, you know. Does she know anything about it? I suppose so. I haven't actually mentioned it to her yet, but... Uh... Good heavens. You don't suppose she wouldn't? Well, it's happened, I imagine. Yeah, what's your hurry? What's my hurry? I'm going to telephone her. Oh, no, you don't. The old man wants to see you. Now. Now? Now. Don't worry, Ross. If something had happened to Paul, you'd have heard by now. Bad news yes, travels. Yes, I know, but it, it's been nearly two weeks, Judy, and they're always back in six or eight hours if... if they're coming back. Judy, look. It's Paul's observer. Yes, that means... Hello, Leslie. Oh, Miss, Miss Kane. Bruce, Miss Kane. When did you get back? Is Paul all right? I, uh, imagine he's quite all right. We um, haven't seen him exactly. You haven't? No. Uh, you see, we've been on uh, 14 days leave. And, yes, uh, and as you can imagine, we've been putting it to pretty good use. Yes. Well, have you all been on leave? Yes. Well, yes. Uh, all the squadron, in fact. Uh, we've uh, sent the second team in. <coughs> well, I uh, think we've got to be getting along. Yes. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Bruce. Bye. Bye. Oh, and uh, have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute, Ross. Perhaps Paul had to help the second team or something. You know better than that. If they're on leave, he's on leave. You saw how they acted, didn't you? Men are so beautifully loyal. Oh, Miss Bruce, there's a message for you. Oh. Oh, what? Read it. Dear Miss Bruce, I am Paul's father. I am in town and shall come to see the performance tonight. I would like very much to have a few words with you afterwards, if it is convenient. Yours faithfully, Gerald Lundy. What does he want? It's very simple, darling. He wants to explain to me that he's allergic to grocer's daughters who go on the stage. Well, I'll give him that pleasure. And I'll explain to him that I have a few allergies myself, and one of them is weak need squadron ladies. Very well sent. Too bad I have this costume on. I'd like to have made a visit really worthwhile. Cracked. We'll 
soon attract a crowd. You find my logic well founded, laugh your surrounded, but cry and you cry all alone. Cry and you cry alone. Your smile is gone and so you're on your own. Remember the weeping willow, my friend. Is such a lonely tree. Just look and see, all the birds have flown. A crowd. You find my logic well founded. Laugh, you're surrounded. Ha ha! Number. It's no good. There's no room for them to work. The rigging stock. I can't fly the drop. We'll have to stop the show for 15 minutes. Very well. Well, Mrs. Tolliver, you don't have to stop the show. Let me go on. What? Oh, let me do my act. I have all my props here. I've always had them here. Oh, Fred. But Mrs. Tolliver, 20 years ago... I, I know. You knocked them cold. What do you think, Sam? Well, what have we got to lose? All right, Fred. I'm on. I'm on! Don't worry, miss. He was a bit of all right in his day. How do you know? I cleaned the theater where he worked 20 years ago. Of course, it won't be the same without Lucy. Lucy? Well, she was the other half of the act, the better half. Do you remember what they did? Oh, luck, it was yesterday. Come with me. There was a tell Bert to follow me, and we'll finish with anywhere. Bert, Fred's going on to do his act. Now follow him and finish up with anywhere. 
Now, how do you know it's worse than the Blitz? <laughs> well, who'd you expect? Bing Crosby? Are you ready, Maestro? Let's torture the customers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Side the wood, boys. It may be a cold winter. And now I'm going to play Pop Goes the Weasel for you with sound effects. Pop Goes the Weasel with sound effects. Wait a minute. I'm going to let you pop the bag. Huh? I'm going to let you pop the bag. Well, you take the bag. Well, you take the bag. Take the bag. I'll, uh, I'll play the music. When I give you the cue, you pop the bag. Whee! Whee! Thank you, folks. Thank you. Didn't do it. Look, give me the bag. Give me the bag. You don't get the idea. Look here. <clears throat> give me the bag. I'd expect a pop without blowing it up. Now what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you. What's the matter? Are you too good to pop? Say, maybe you'd like to hear, listen to the Mockingbird? No! You're going to get it anyhow. Oh, listen to the Mockingbird. Huh? Wait a minute. I'm going to give you another chance. Here. You take the bird whistle. You take oh. the bird whistle. Take the bird whistle. In this number, when I say, when I say, oh, listen to the Mockingbird. Oh, listen to the Mockingbird is the cue for the bird whistle. Uh -huh. You got it? Yes. Thank you, folks. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot to mention, in this number, I do a very clever imitation of the mockingbird in flight. What do you want me to do, break my leg? <laughs> oh, listen to the mockingbird. Oh, listen to the mockingbird. <laughs> the guy's balmy. But I'm all right. Look, the time to pop is over. Now it's the bird effect. The bird effect. Oh, listen to the mockingbird. Oh, listen to the mocking. Give me the bird. <laughs> <laughs> that is the last. Take it easy. Oh, take it easy. Take it easy. Oh, well, all right, all right. Whoopee! Whoopee! Thank you, folks. Thank you. <clears throat> Boys, accord indeed. And now I... I've lost me dicky. I have a very beautiful thing I'm going to play for you, a number from our show called Anywhere. When you hear me play this, you'll wish you were anywhere but here. Are you ready, Professor? Let's give him one.
believe it or not, but one night I played 108 courses of this. Give them another one, boy. Boy, sir. Come in. How do you do? I'm Paul's father. I know. This is my friend, Miss Kane. Her best friend, and I'm staying. Oh, uh, I'm sure if uh, Miss Bruce doesn't object, I don't. I'm very much afraid I've taken on a difficult task. You'll be surprised how easy it's going to be. Sit down, Mr. Lundy. Judy. Uh, have you uh, heard from my son in the last two weeks? Well, I haven't kept track of the time exactly. I... You know I haven't, Mr. Lundy. Neither have I. You haven't? But he's here in London, isn't he? His friends were... Oh, no. No, he was detailed for a special mission of some sort. That much I did learn. Uh, something quite important, I believe. Important enough to take him away from his own squadron. Uh, I received a trunk with books and personal belongings yesterday. You mean something's happened? Oh, no. No. Uh, I believe that during his absence, his squadron is being moved to another station, that's all. Oh. Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, among the things he sent home was this Bible, the, the one I gave him when he enlisted. This is precisely the way it came. Your photograph. The page in the theater program. You can see where he's written. This is for her. What's he trying to suggest? Rosalind needs a Bible. Quiet, Judy. I didn't disturb a thing. Here is where your picture was, in 1 Corinthians. The first Corinthians is one of Paul's epistles, a Saint Paul. My Paul was named after him, hopefully. Uh, do you think he's trying to tell me something, or, or... She means maybe it's, um, you know, a code or something. Maybe. Let's see now. And concerning the things who are you not one or the other, but I would that all men were even as I must. Therefore I say it is better to marry. What was that last one? It's better to marry than... Mr. Lundy, look. The words, this is for her, come right opposite, it's better to marry. Do you suppose that... That's the way I translated it. Well, I'll be... I admit it is an extraordinary way to propose to a girl. What do you think? What do you think? I hope you're going to accept. Oh, dear. The last time I proposed was 27 years ago. I seem to have lost my technique. Will you marry us, Rosalind? Of course I will. Polly, Angela, Tony, Joan, Tommy. Apparently your betrothal is being announced. It has every sanction, I know. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. What I've learned about the theater tonight has made me very humble and very proud. It's nice to know that my daughter's a soldier as well as my son. Tommy, Tommy, have you heard that? What? 
What's the matter, Tommy? Nothing. I'm just wondering what's going to happen to the deal we all made to stick to the music box for the duration. But I'm not going to leave the music box. Paul's got his job and I've got mine. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. All Mr. Paul has to do is raise his finger and you'll come running wherever he is. Tommy. You're kidding, aren't you? The only person I've been kidding is myself. I had a lot of funny ideas about you, only they're not so funny now. I never got around to telling you, Roz, but I'm in love with you. I thought I was or used to be. I don't know. You sort it out. No, Roz, it's his group captain. He's waiting in your dressing room. Oh, Sam. Now, now, take it easy. Is he... Get anything... off, Miss Bruce. I'm sorry. You can tell me. I only wanted to tell you that Paul's back in the country and he'll be here tomorrow, Miss Bruce. Oh. And to explain that he's been on a secret mission. He read about the conference overseas. But when a person is like that has to be flown somewhere, we choose a pretty good pilot to fly. And your Paul's a pretty good pilot, Miss Bruce. Uh, you must think I'm awfully silly, but I saw the car outside and I... Well, I had to be in London for the day, so I thought I'd save you 24 hours of worry. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Oh. Ross. Ross. That's all right. I'm not crying, I'm laughing. Oh, Judy. Paul's coming back. Oh. Doesn't matter how far, dear, I take a trip to a star, dear, for that warm embrace. Just say you care, and I'll go anywhere, anytime, and any place. The Air Ministry have agreed and everything. Hello. Hello, Tommy. How are you? So you're back, eh? And a fine welcome, too. That's a what nice... What would you do with a girl who turns you down? Turns you down? Yes, here I am with something I never counted on. A real honeymoon. A long one in Canada. I'm being sent there. And she tells me she's going to stay here in the theater. But, Paul, oh, don't... No, she's not. She's going to Canada. There you are. Tommy knows what he's talking about. Not always, but I do now. Good luck, Rose. And lots of happiness. Everybody on stage for the finale, places quickly. <laughs> and if you're still in town when that ship sails for Canada, I'll fire you. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Good luck. Good luck. Have you seen Tommy, Fred? Tommy? Well, now, come to think of a chance. Where? Heading across the street to the pub, Judy. Judy. Hello, Tom. Thought I'd have a little celebration on my own. Join me. Thanks. Sherry, please. Have you got something to celebrate, Tommy? Certainly. When an old pal gets married, it calls for a private toast from her two best friends. To Ross. To Ross. It's going to be sort of empty without her, isn't it, Tommy? Oh, yes, yes. Sure. Especially to us. We started something that 
The three of us. And now? Well, take one away from three and you've got two. A nice, comfortable figure. Two. A very nice figure, too. You were very sweet to Roz, Tommy. I could kiss you for it. Well, who's stopping you? On fire watch, it's not there. He must be in his dressing room. Rod. Well, he must be someplace in the theater. If he is, we can't find him. The pub. They got the pub. Stand back there. Keep under cover. Tommy wasn't at the party. No, no, he wasn't. I didn't see him. Judy. Where's Judy? Dear God, please. Not Judy. Not Tommy. Oh, Paul, I can't stand. I've got to go. Rosalind, you mustn't. and beginners. Better call it off, Sam. We can't go on. We can't do that, Mrs. Tolliver. That's the way it is. One falls out, another steps in. Soldier or civilian. Very well, Sam. We'll have to make some changes in the running order. See. Switch the gold number next to the opening, and we'll have to cut tonight and every night. Holly, don't cut Judy's number. I'll do it. Okay, Roz. We'll have it next to the closing. Children, the curtain's going up. Make it a great performance. You don't have to tell me. I know. You're staying. You... You understand? I understand. And what we need is a few more guys from St. Louis. My darling. If you've a faith like mine, the stars are bound to shine. The skies will all be bright tonight and every night. So keep your spirits high, the clouds will all go by. We've got a goal to sight tonight and every night. Every night. Say hi, Sam. Why so glum? Things could be much worse. And how about you, Len? Why so sad? And tell me, how can we go forward when you're in reverse? If you agree with me, let's have some harmony. Do, re, 
me, fuss on me. So what if it's not right? Oh, what? Whatever song is played will help your worries fade and make your cares take flight tonight and every night. Every night we're gone. 